In this Sailing Doodles, we make it into Puerto Rico where we have some very expensive problems with customs. We meet some old friends and do some work on the boat. This season of Sailing Doodles features Bobby, Taylor, and our special guest for the next few weeks, fellow YouTubers, Babe, Where's My Passport? So follow along on our journey as we set sail for the Caribbean in our 1989 CT56. This channel is made possible by our patrons. Thank you so much. In the previous video, we set off from the Dominican Republic on an overnight sail across the Mona Passage to Puerto Rico. On the way, we had some amazing encounters with humpback whales. In the afternoon and evening, we had some great conditions for sailing, so we hoisted the sails. By morning, the conditions had changed and we were forced to motor sail. With land in sight, it was time to hoist the quarantine flag, indicating we were not yet checked into customs. We lowered the sails and got ready to enter port. So how was your first overnight uh, sail? It was actually really exciting. Yeah. Like there was stuff happening. We we got radioed by a massive cargo ship. We had to adjust course. Yeah. We had to wake Bobby up and he didn't wake up. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. It was eventful, but we're here now. Yeah, at least we got to sail for about, uh, we, we uh, just proper sailed for about six hours and we motor sailed yeah. the rest of the night. So it was uh, it was a good, yeah, it was better than I thought. I thought we were gonna have to motor most of the way, but it was nice to be able to sail. Yeah, it was very cool to sail. As we approached land, the crew set out fenders and dock lines. In the previous video, I showed you why this boat can be hard to back up because of the full keel, although the bow thruster does help. Before tying off the lines, we had to lower the dinghy so we were able to access the transom from the dock. Into Marina Pescaderia, great place here, really top notch, really. I mean, you know, uh, it's got Wi Fi and showers, restrooms, bars, restaurants, all that stuff, and it's pretty cool. Like, you know, I need some boat work done, right? And, uh, and the little welcoming package was like a bit, list of 12 vendors. But anyway, so we use the CBP Rome app to check in, which is kind of the US government's newest little, I don't know, it's like an app on your phone that you check in to the United States with. They video chat with you. They check all your documents and everything. Well, all right, so Taylor and I, no problem being Canadian and American. Uh, the other two are British and, from, and Dutch. So uh, unfortunately, I thought all they needed was their ESTA, which is the paperwork you fill out before you come to the United States when you're coming from overseas. Well, they did that. They got approved for the ESTA, and uh, they're saying that that does not apply to private boats. So uh, now we have to go to the airport and beg and plead, and hopefully they don't charge us too much money, but it sounds like it's gonna be kind of expensive. So Jose is like the general manager, president of the marina. And uh, he's been nice enough to actually loan us his car because it's like 60 miles to the Aguadilla Airport. Well, we are, we're no longer harboring illegal immigrants. <laughs> yeah, so they're illegal now. It's kind of a crappy deal. I mean, so they got ESTAs, which is if you're coming to the United States and you're from Europe, you need to get an ESTA. I don't know what it stands for, but basically it's an approval. You get a 90 day instead of having you get a visa, it's just an approval to come. And it says right on there that, so you are approved to travel in the United States. So that's why they thought and you thought that there wasn't yeah. any problem with that. But then in very, very fine print, it says, I never saw with it. the exception of entering on a private vessel or a private plane. But it says that like in a sub paragraph somewhere else on the back page that you don't see. And so, so yeah, so that was, that was $600 fine per person. person. So. It kind of sucks. That's a big. That's a big ticket. Yeah. So. But now we're no longer uh, yeah. human, human traffickers. So. <laughs> that's yeah. good. Yeah. Once we were legally checked in, we lowered the quarantine flag. We spent the rest of the afternoon loading up on provisions that we've been missing from the states. 
Once we were all set, we headed to the Marina Pub to catch up with some friends. All right, it's good to see everybody again. We all met like Bahamas, Chris Cables, all that stuff. Here, guys. All right, there you go. We'll see you there, everybody. We even got to catch up with an old crewmate. Puerto Real is a very protected bay on the west coast of Puerto Rico. It's home of Marina Pescaderia and a great place to check in to Puerto Rico. Jose owns the uh, marina here and he does this quite often. Uh, for cruisers, we are going to have a little briefing on cruising around Puerto Rico. He's going to give us all the best anchorages and places to go and things to do and all that. Uh, you know, it's kind of fun. So there's going to be about, I don't know, seven or eight other cruisers that all signed up to go. And we're going to go do that right now. Sailing doodle shirt. Boom. I've got to get me one of those. That's right. I've got to yeah, get me one of those for sure. And the flip flops. Yeah. You can get one too. Uh, there's a link down below to our little swag store where you can buy shirts and all that stuff. It was a great briefing giving us all the hot spots and must-see areas on the south coast of Puerto Rico. Jose, thank you for, uh, you know, showing us the ropes here. Sure. A lot of good information. He is, you're the owner of the marina. Yep. And how long have you had the marina operational now? Uh, ever since 2011. Okay. And it's a full service. I mean, you get, you get anything you need done, boat work done. All Everything that for, we, we cater to the cruising community, as mm -hmm. you can see on all the masks that are yeah. out there. Yeah. And that's what we do, and we like to help you guys, to help you out on yeah. anything, so, yeah. It's a great place, so if you're coming, uh, if you're checking in from the DR, or from Parts West, you can check in here too, and yep. uh, makes it really good. So thanks for having us. us. All right. Sure, have a nice day. Mm -hmm. So Taylor is editing, she's taken over the uh, Boat Tour Tuesday video, so most of the Boat Tour Tuesdays you've seen in the last couple weeks have been hers editing. So she's doing that. I just finished posting a video to our patrons. So uh, our patrons always get the videos uh, uh, at least a, at least a day early or so, um, and then we'll release it to the general public. So that's kind of a benefit for being our patrons. So we drank some bad water in the Dominican a couple weeks ago, and we all got sick, and it was not fun. Uh, our water maker's not working right now, so we actually used uh, water in the Dominican. We filled our tanks with a little bit of bleach, uh, but obviously it wasn't enough to cure it, kill everything in there, and so we all got sick. So we don't want that to happen anymore. So the guys at Aquastar sent us this Seagull 4 uh, water purification system. Uh, basically it comes with the filter, all the hardware and everything you would need to hook it up, and the faucet and all this. And basically it'll strain the water down to 0.4 microns, which is pretty small, and it's supposed to like uh, block viruses and bacteria and everything. So uh, we shouldn't have any more problems with drinking water. And it's really super easy to install. Basically, you just drill a hole in your countertop to mount that. Um, mount this under the sink with, a with their little mounting bracket they have. And then they give you this little uh, adapter where you just cut your inline cold water hose. And then you just mount it in there. And then this connects to another little cable right here, which goes in and out right here. And uh, then we've got a water filtration system. It needs a minimum 25 PSI, which we don't have a problem with. Uh, I think most boats run more than 25 PSI on your water. And so I'm gonna install that real quick and uh, thank you guys at Aquastar. It was a very easy install. It took all of about 20 minutes. It's like clean water. That's good actually, because the tanks, yeah, oh, that's great. Perfect. Hey guys, real quick, gonna try something on this video. What we're gonna do here, is to going forward for the next few videos, and we might continue to do it if it has good success, is that we are going to try to respond to as many comments as we can in the first hour after posting a video. So we'll be able to interact with you a little better, and it helps us out as well. So what we're gonna do here is, if you haven't already clicked to subscribe, please click that, and then next to that is a bell. If you click that bell, that turns on notifications and lets you know when we post a video. So as soon as you see that notification pop 
pop up that we posted a video. Just click on it, watch the video, leave us a comment down below, and then we will try our best, we will do our best to respond to you in the first hour after posting the video. Be sure to tune in to the next episode of Sailing Doodles as we take you on a trip to the interior of Puerto Rico to the Arecibo Observatory. And then we continue our cruise down the south coast of Puerto Rico. Be sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so we can talk to you in the comments in the first hour after posting a video. And thank you so much to our patrons for making this channel possible.